Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is Alex once again, and hopefully this finds you well. Uh, I am going to continue where we left off at. Um, I am not going to create a database trigger. I'm just going to go ahead and get this thing working here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our Visual Studio. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our SQL Server Management Studio and get those running and ready to go. We're going to come into our solution, which is here. And we should still have a branch from the last time we did this here. Survey says, I got an update to do here. Yep. So we don't have any changes because we didn't make any changes yet. We were doing all our stuff on the SQL side. I'm going to go ahead and get logged into my SQL server here. And I should have, here's my shopping list database. There's my items table. And there's my stored procs. I should have two. I don't. Actually, I think I'm looking in the wrong table here. Blank database. There we go. This one here. And I should have two tables there. And if I do select top thousand rows, let's see what's in there. And we're going to um, remove all of those because um, we're going to start anew here. Because all of this is... Um, this is just a number of rows in a table and, and this comes this goes to this other shopping list table over here so we've got some other work we need to do to kind of clean that up but um what we'll do is we'll we'll worry, kind of worry about that when we get there i just want to start inserting data into our shopping lists table and we should have some rows in this table here i hit edit instead of Select, select top thousand rows. There's 39 rows of data in there. They each have a unique ID for that table. They all have unique IDs for this over here. Okay. And we've got different dates in there as well, as you can tell. So what we need to do, if we go back to our insert new rows, you can see we've got this unique ID here. And this unique ID uh, is blank. But we still need to pass that into it. So let's go ahead and get this going here. So the easy way we're going to do this, and this is if you're um, server runs on your local machine this is not the best this is not the way you want to you're going to want to do this when you're giving this software out to others um, but we're going to go over here to our sql server object explorer we see our sql server we see our grocery list database and we see our two tables there and we see our stored procs over here as well. Bam. So what we're going to do is we still have to do this load and this save. We talked about doing a modal like we did with our update items where we list the number of records, the date, and then they can select one of them and then it should go out and grab all of the items for that and populate this table here. So that's going to be the next heavy lifting part that we're going to do there. So we've got all these other ones um, situated here. And then... Um, 
we'll have to do a little bit of fixing here on this update query as well because it's going to have to go out to the database and update rows that are possibly in that database as well. So we've got a few things we need to do there. But let's just kind of get it working so we can load information here. Okay, so we click load, nothing happens. We'll double click on our load. We've got a handler for it. So now what we need to do is we're going to come over here to our DAO as well. And we're going to... Ooh, Okay, so what we're going to do now um, is we're going to go over and um, we're going to we're going to actually interface with an ORM. What is an ORM to interface with our table? What's an ORM? Well, an ORM is an object relational management tool, um, and what that does is it makes it easier for you to interface with your database. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to tools and go down to package manager and actually I don't want the console I want the manage packages for solution make sure I'm connected to NuGet here click browse um, I got a couple of updates and what do I need to update here that's fine. We'll update these. Say yep, accept. And while that's doing its thing, come on. When I close this, it'll update those. Okay, go back to browse and let's type Dapper. D A P P E R. There it is. High performance micro or M. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to add it to both my test project and my grocery app project. And I'm going to click install. It'll automatically install everything, and it says it automatic. It already exists there. Okay, so I can close this now. Yep. Okay. So now I've got Dapper there. Let's go over to the Dapper website and let's um, follow along with it. As you can see, it makes it real simple to interface with your database connections. I love Dapper. I am not a um, I am not an Entity Framework fan. I think it's overly complex and it doesn't have to be. So let's go ahead and do go to the knowledge base or getting started. Let's go to the getting started because there's a tutorial in here. This is exactly what you need to do. Okay. So I've already installed Dapper through NuGet. We already have a table that we know of. So the first, the next step that we have to do to make sure that we are using Dapper the right way is we need to create a model of stuff that's going to come back from the database. So your model is going to be basically your database schema for that table or that database for that table. So what you see here is what you're going to get minus the unique ID. We don't have to worry about that. But all these other fields here we need to worry about. So we're going to copy this. We'll come over here. So we've got a list model here, all right? We're going to say add class. What do we want to call this? Let's call this. I already have a list model, don't I? Um, we'll call it DB model one. DB model one. I know, very self-explanatory. Add. 
Okay. And in here, I'm just going to put that in there. And again, there's multiple ways to interface with, um, excuse me, with a SQL server. This is just one of the ways. Excuse me. Okay, so we're going to create our model to mimic this. And it's a good thing we put these here because we know what these fields are going to be. So we have an item name, item quantity, and item price. So we're going to put public string, or we can just say prop, prop string item name. I may as well just go over here and grab them. Just do it this way. Copy these. Paste these. Kill that. Alrighty. And now we're going to do public date. And it's going to be added by public prop. Uh, actually, that's a string. This is a date time. Let's call this insert model. Go wash your hands and flush that stool. model well okay so what you can do is you can just right click here and since since we only made a couple of you know we'll just rename this like it's supposed to be list model that was dumb okay this is the one we need to rename rename insert model there we go Item name, added by, added date. Not worried about the updated by or the updated date. The deleted indicator will automatically be a zero. And now the U list ID, that's going to be a GUID. did step one. Step two is we need to create, um, and this is with MVC, let, there's a better um, dapper tutorial. There's a better tutorial over there somewhere without MVC. These are the methods for Dapper. Uh, insert. We're just going to do an insert. So you can use Dapper to um, do very simple inserts and updates here. I don't want to confuse anybody because I'm not going to use this MVC tutorial there. There's a 
better way to do it. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Over here in our DAO, we're going to say using Dapper. Right? And then down here, we've already done our data table stuff here. And we are probably going to model, we're going to, we're going to do some different stuff up there eventually. We're going to, we're going to refract, we're going to refactor our code eventually up there to make it a lot easier. So since we're doing an add record, let me do it this way. <clears throat> We're going to pass in our insert model. We'll see what I'm doing here in a few minutes here. We're going to also need this system data that SQL client because that's going to interface with our SQL database. We'll go ahead and do our new SQL connection, like we're doing here. We're going to need a, a connection string. So to do to get that, all you have to do is you can go into here, right click on your table, and click properties. And here at the properties, you'll see, you should see a connection string. There it is right there. Now. You'll see this connection string here, but in a real world environment, you never want to display your connection string in the open. That is a no, no. You don't want to do that. But in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and do it for the expediency sake. And then we'll come back and we'll, we'll, you know, kind of show you how that, how that works. Um, but you never want to, um, keep your connection string out there in the open. You, you don't want to do that. Um, but in this instance, I'm going to make this a private string. Equals. Boom. That's another reason why you want to do it, because it's just this really long, giant string here. Okay, so <clears throat> you can actually put it in a config file if you have one. Uh, app config, there's a way to put it in there as well. And then you can retrieve it, so that's not your code. Um, but for, like I said, for expediency's sake, we'll just do it this way. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new SQL connection using the using clause. The reason why you want to do that SQL connection and you pass in the connection string like that and then you make this like so. Um, <clears throat> and the reason why you want to um, use the using statement is because you're opening you're opening up an SQL connection. Anything that happens inside of this code block here is going to use that connection or have that connection available to you. When it leaves from executing this code block, it will automatically dispose of the SQL connection for you. So you don't have to close it. You don't have to, you don't, you don't have to remember closing it. You don't have to rem, you know, close it. It'll automatically close for you. Um, so now, con, con.open. So this opens the connection the SQL server. Okay. 
okay and you see that con turns blue over here minimize that just a smidge so now what we're gonna do is we're going to do the actual dapper um, query here and it's good practice to just put this in a try catch block so then that way if there's any issues with it you don't throw your code up an error here okay so now let's say return false return true okay so <clears throat> inside of our using we're going to do our dapper hit bar um, execute SQL equals con dot execute and so there's many things that you can do here you can do a con dot execute get um, execute scalar and what that does is it gives you um, it gives you a um, a list of models back here you have to just do your SQL statement up here we'll just call it a PSQL equals and then we'll just turn to what we got going on here and let's just do the execute um, Let's just do this real real quick execute the existing lists so the way this is going to work is it's just going to run say okay it's going to run whatever's in here so this is going to be our sql SQL dot two and it won't be insert model uh, insert scalar. this time we're going to call um, DAO dot insert record and we're going to say model and it says um, this is a list model I need to make solution and we 
we'll start our solution. We'll say add. I'm going to hit F11. F10, 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 F10. So we've got a connection with our SQL Server. And you can tell that if you debug in here, you can see the version of the SQL Server, the name of our SQL Server um, itself, the database we're connected to. That's what all this gets you here. F10 again, F10. So now we've got some kind of an exception there. Let's see what we've got going on here. Section E. And we'll just um, E dot We can look at this message in a minute here. Ten, eleven, ten there. What's the exception? Must declare. Ref oh, that's why. <laughs> okay. So let's get rid of this um, and just do the execute there. think that's going to work either, now that I think about it. 11, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, actually it did, okay. So we have 19 rows that came back, because it just looked at the first one. Now if we wanted to, we can test that, let's see what we got here. <clears throat> now what we could do is we could um, with our return model we can scale it so that we can see the count and the added date there so let's go back and let's see how they did it here so here's our car there we go yep. so let's come over here and let's do a, another model. And let's just copy, copy this model here. Copy that. Paste that in there. Put a name. Rename this. And we're going to call this get lists model. We're just going to call this um, unique count. Capital U. That's an integer. And then date time. Added date. Like that. Come over here. Our DAO, and instead of doing just getting one row back or one column back, we're going to say get lists model there. And what that should do is it should give us a list of models there. So let's see what happens here. Boom, 11, oh, I just had a 5. 11 and uh oh there we go so it tells us invalid cast from system oh I know what we need to do and I believe there's a new indicator there that to list So we have to have a generic. This is going to air out in a minute. And control period. Hmm. What did we do differently? There should be 
wrapper using system.link. should be execute scalar, it should be query. That's why it's airing out on us. Query, there we go. So now, F5, F11, so I should have a list of stuff back here. So there we go. There's our added data. There's our 19. The next one should be a 10 for the 8th. And the next one should be the 1st for the 12th. 12th one. Okay. So now I have a list of this get list model. And then I could actually return this list. So that's what we're going to do now. Instead of doing a two list, so that should still just be an I enumerable. Yep. It's going to be I enumerable. I E enumerable. Well, that's different. in a model anymore. We really need this get lists model. It doesn't like that. Control period. There we go. And then turn this insert record. We're going to rename that from insert record to get list rows like that get rid of you put you in there like this is I enumerable of get lists model save that and instead of it being insert record it lists rows. <clears throat> uh, list rows equals. You'll see why we did this in a minute. <clears throat> oh, I want to get rid of that. Yep. Save that. Start. What I could do is just um, this is just a I enumerable of get list models. SQL. If everything goes well. So, alrighty, let's try that again. Add 
like that. F5. F10. a list of rows back here that I could go through and display to the person and give them that option. And I can pass this list, this IEnumerable list of rows over to my new modal that I'll build here in a minute. So let's go ahead and build our new IEnumerable list of rows. like we see it here, two columns and give them a checkbox that they can uh, click into or something. But just just for now, let's just do it this way here. Let's come over here to Toolbox and then we'll um, just make a quick uh, text box there. Just display it real quick. And make this text box. Actually, no. Let's get rid of the text box. And we'll come over here. Let me check my time here. Oh. How long have I been going here? Can't tell. Um, let's see. Well, I guess we could do another data grid view. Let's just do another data grid view here. Boom. Boom. Make a couple of buttons in here. Boom. Copy and paste. like that, right? Let's make it a little bigger. Okay. So what's going to happen is they come in here. Yeah, they come in here. They see the lists of data in there, and we display it. So let me double click in here. And over here, I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to grab this get lists model. models and then over here lowercase L put that there actually underscore 
now we're going to copy our logic from what we did with our data grid view. So let's come up here and find our initialization of our data grid view. There it is. Data grid view. Copy that. Go down to initialize. go and then so our data grid view source data source equals our underscore list model okay <clears throat> so let's save that back over to our main form and then we are going to do a new not mu <laughs> we're going to basically do the same stuff we did down here so we'll just copy that right there existing list display existing lists and we're going to throw list rows into there I was just told I got a pink tablet <laughs> this needs to be an IE numerable of our models instead of that this needs to be an IE numerable we gotta cast it the right way yo hmm? there we go save that come back over here it doesn't like something over there Oop. go back there bar be list form pop it's form pop there's no f method over there for that because we're just trying to get the thing to pop up okay so let's rebuild this again and let's start her up click add f10 come down We've got our data that's coming back. We have our IE numerable here with data in it. F10, F11, F10. Boom, 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 boom. That's three. And there we go. Uh-oh. What'd I do? probably because I hovered over it and there we go yeah so what's gonna happen is this will say instead of it saying unique count I need to, I can name this something differently or something and then here's the added date over there so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna click on the one that I selected return the one I selected and then go look up all of the records for that particular list and then display that data to the to the user so I can close this one here close that close that and then over here 
this is loaded. And then when they click the list, what I want to happen, wait, let me undo that. It's, it's not gonna like that. Go back over to the button, come back here. Delete this. Come back over here and delete this. Oh, I got rid of it already. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's do some renaming here. Properties. Over here, we're going to call this button um, Get Lists. Or um, choose list there. That's the text. This one's going to be called select list. Okay. I'm going to make the font a little bit bigger. Put it at 14. And this one's just going to be a close form. It's going to be a 14 as well. It's going to say close form. Okay. So when we double click on this one, we're going to take what's selected. And we're going to return that one as a model. This one's going to be public list model model. And then this is going to be uh, like we did before, we're going to take uh, model equals underscore list model and the index is going to be the selected index and so let's go back over and reuse the code that we had down here for that where'd you go right there copy that we can even copy that code right there and just use the same doggone thing and we'll come over here say that there SEL something oh so we're gonna do some link for this one here okay um, what we're gonna do is list model dot to list uh, how do we want to do this List model dot select um, x x dot and no, that's not it. So what I'm trying to do is just grab the one that 
that's that's already there. I guess I could. Let's see, SEL dot. That's the row index. Data grid view one. Dot current row. I think this is where we do the select. There we go. Dot hmm. How do I want to do this? This gives us collection of cells here. How do we do it on the other one here? Rows. There we go. Uh, rows. And rows are going to be in our form here. I mean, in our model. It's going to be this one right here. Copy that. And then go back to how we did that. Mm -mm -mm. No. That's not what we did. That just gets the index. How do I do that? I guess I could always just pass over the, well, there's no data table there. Okay, so. Well, let's just see what, what comes back to us here. See var DG sales equals that. That means what? Okay, baby, I'll put it on the charger for you. <laughs> I'm being told to put it. I'm being told to put it. A, a tablet on the charger. Okay, so um, let's just see how this works here. Let's see what this code does. This is the beauty of doing development code in a debugger environment because you can see how it's going to work. So I'm going to F10, F10, F10. We know that comes back. F11, F10, F10, F10. Five. So let me come over here. I've got that already done there. So if I click on this one and I click this choose list, let's see what happens. F10, F10. What do I get back here? bunch of stuff. Okay, well, um, I need something that's unique that's going to allow me to do a query in my link, in my uh, model here. Row index 1. Cells. can we get to here? Cells dot, is there a value in there? There's a value of 10. And then the other one value is the date. 
Okay. So I wonder if I can do it this way. Cells. Is that an index? Yep. So this will give me um, value. This will give me the unique count. This one will give me the date. So I should have a date and a count in these two. Let's see here. I hear you, dear. Let's see. Why don't you call them again? 10, F10, 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 and I select that, F10, 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 and I should have a date, and a, there's my count, and then there's my date. Okay. But, let's see what we've got, oh, yeah, we're, we're okay. Okay. Okay, so now what I can do is I can query my selected models here and just grab the one that I need, or I'll just create my return. Uh, 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 I'll grab the record in the model that I need to. So I'm going to do a quick link query. Now, link will slow your stuff down if you're doing hundreds of queries and stuff, but in this instance, we're just going to go ahead and use it so I can show you what it looks like. So let's see here. And we're going to say model. Excuse me. Um, var ret model equals. We're going to query through that list model. List model. Select. This is called a lambda expression. X dot unique count equals um, actually that should be where where lambda expression X dot unique count equals unique count and x dot t added date equals unique date and I'm not sure if that's going to work because this is an object um, we need to parse this and make it into a date time. So let's do a quick get date like that one. Uh, let's see here. How do I want to do this for the and cast this as, as an integer dot. Convert to int32. That one will work. The other one's going to be the problem. This date one is going to be a bit of an issue here. So let's say um, try date time. Try parse exact. We've got to pass in the string. Copy that to string. And I format provider. This is going to be, um, oh, this is the format. Here, 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 here. Month, 
wrong. This is year, 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 year. Month, month, day, day. I think there's dashes in it. Dash, dash. And then um, up here is going to be the system globalization dot culture info dot en current culture I think it is and then that's date time styles date time styles dot none I think it is and then this one is its provider Oh, I format provider. Try parse exact. So this I format provider um, string I format provider right there. System global. Yeah, that's what I thought. System.globalation. There we go. I need to just grab that right there. Culture info. Go back. Culture info. I'm just up here. I'm just going to make a private one here. Uh, no. Culture system dot globalization. that and equals new culture you just do it that way there we go get on in there I think it is. Yep. So then down here in the try parse exact, we want to use the string, the date, format, the culture info. stuff to convert a dog on date time here. I think it just passed culture inf, don't we? There we go. So now we're going to do out date here. where dot 
select uh, X new uh, get list model and T added date will equal X dot T added date comma give me count will equal x dot t uh, unit count dot first or default and so what that will should do is it should give us the first one where that um Should give us the the first instance where that date. Well, let's just run it. I'll sh I'll kind of explain it if it works. <laughs> okay. Let's break on that. We'll unbreak on that. We'll unbreak on that because we know it's working right now. We rebuild this. We'll start. Add, double click. All right, so let's see if this works. I think that try parse exact is gonna blow chunks here. No, oh well, yeah, it did. It actually did. The date's not in the right format here. So let's see, what's this value here? 12, 8, 20, 20. 12, 8, 20, so this is the format I need to use right here. Month, day, year. I have that messed up. So this should say month, month, slash, day, day, slash, year, 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 year. And let's start that again and see what happens here. 10 of 10 of 10. Still not right. Let's see. That's the wrong one. It's this one here. Well, let's see what's coming back in that string. Let's just see what's coming back in there. I think the time is throwing it off. T equals boom. Start that, add that, choose that one, 10 of 10, 10 of 10, what do I got here? 12, 12, 20, 20. If I just change that to that, if that'll work, let's see if that does. Instead of doing that, let's get this date T in there and see what happens there. Date T. Hmm. Ten of ten of ten. So I'm going to change date T. Just be the date. F10. Yeah, it's the the way that that date's formatted there. Um, I guess I could 
in my query. Hmm. It's yeah. It's it's messing around with the time. Uh, let's do hours, minutes, seconds, a.m. See if that does it. Let's see. Actually, let's just do it this way. Copy. Paste. I don't know if this is going to work or not. That doesn't work because it's a string already. So let's see. I wonder if I can do anything else on this. You dot. Hmm. Yeah, two string. Yeah, I didn't know. I don't know why that that doesn't work, but let's see what happens. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see. Yeah, it's still throwing me chunks there. Um, it's all because this date is not right. Well, I guess what I could do is convert the date in my SQL as well. So let's go to our SQL here. We can convert that to a string return in our stored proc proc. proc. Go to modify. Select that. There's the date. Okay. What do I want to do here? So let's do a SQL conversion. a way to do it right here convert there we go copy that drop that row though that table Let's just copy this and say new query paste copy that well I guess I can use this that. Paste. 
paste that, X that, paste that, run that. There we go. That's what we need. And actually, I wonder if that try parse will work on there. Well, let's just try it out, shall we? Let's open up our link pad. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to pause this. So we need a C sharp statements. Nope. Statements. Yo. Let's go over here and we'll copy our try parse here. Copy that. Paste that out there. Date time styles none. Copy that. System. This is a proof of concept test here, so that's what we're doing here. And then we're gonna throw in a back in there. And then we're gonna copy that. I believe that works. That should not be a problem that this should be your 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 month month day day and let's see dump or outdate dump <sighs> let's see what happens when this happens here Okay, so that would work. So, so I guess what we could do in this is, yeah, we'll just grab it this way. So let's copy this and update the stored proc that way as t added t added date like that Run this procedure again. We should probably update our schema. Copy that. Come down here. Update 
our schema. Save that. Close that. Refresh. Let's execute the stored prompt and say OK. And there we go. We got our stuff back. Now, we'll come back over here to our DAO. Yep, that looks fine there. We'll have to go to our get list model though. And this is going to be a string. And actually, yeah, this is a string. T added date. Let's try to, something's wrong here. Outdate. Oh. Let's be here, here, here. Day, day. It just texted me. Who is this? <clears throat> Somebody's asking me a question. Goodbye. Okay, so <laughs> that's a string uh, and date. Hmm. How do I want to do this? Oh, I can do it this way. Two string here, 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 month, month, day, day. Bam. Save that. Start our rows. Say add. There's our dates. Choose our list. Doom, 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 doom. We should have a date here. Oh no. So let's see. Sales. Oh. Dot value. Dot two string. Let's try it again. Boom. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. So there's our date. Boom. There's our date. And boom. 2020 T added date. Yep, okay. And then boom, we should have one row. Yep. And there's our date right there. And then this is what we would return. So what we need to do is return that model. Come up here. Oh, wait, I can't do that. It's a void. So what I need to do is take this uh, rent model is a copy of this get list model. Grab all this logic, copy that, this model, paste that in there, up here. Public, get this model. 
Over here, we get the model. Um, yeah, we get the model, and then we want to pull back all of the rows for that model. Um, Actually, that's all going to go. List model, is that what I use? Get list model. Get list model. Print model. And I'll say rent model equals that. And then I want to go grab the information. to do a um, another select execution here so we'll save this and then in the next video we'll go ahead and get that done so until then peace and God bless you mm -hmm.